Alrighty. Thought I'd focus on a little bit of short game uh, today. It's a lot warmer than yesterday. It was about zero in here yesterday. It's actually in the 40s today, low 40s. So I got a 60, 54, a 52, and a pitching wedge. I'm gonna start with the 60. Just throw these over here. But I keep seeing some of the absolute worst chipping instruction I've ever seen in my entire life on, on YouTube and on the internet, I'm trying to be taught by people. And that's not only my opinion, actually. Well, my greatest short game tip would to be look up Phil Mickelson's Secrets to the Short Game and watch that and pay very close attention then take those things and go practice them. Because a lot of what I'm gonna be saying is just what Phil Mickelson is saying in that series. I, I've always chipped the way Phil chips. I mean, why not? He's arguably one of the greatest short game masters of all time. And I actually rewatched a little bit of it last night, even though I've seen it three or four times through the years. But I forget the exact quote, I'm paraphrasing. He talks about this center ball position, 90 degree angle, trying to bring the club back to that 90 degree angle. And he's got the same opinion as I have. If your teacher is trying to teach you that, go find a new teacher. Go find a new YouTube instructor or whatever, because that is the absolute worst way to chip, short of, you know, you're hitting a seven iron or a five wood little bump and run off the green. And even then I'm not gonna play it in the middle of my stance. It's just infuriating, you know, seeing all these people, oh, this is so great, this is so great, when it's some of the worst advice, especially for anyone trying to be a serious player. You know, if you're trying to break 100, it's pretty, it's pretty damn easy to break 100. You could basically do anything you want. And Phil Mickelson says this even, there's infinite ways to swing the club, but there's only one way to trip effectively and that is the hinge and hold method and depending on what kind of chip you're playing there's really only a couple ball positions there's off your back foot and off your front foot uh, a middle ball placement is almost never going to be played with any kind of chips green side chips even 30 40 50 yard pitches you know with your sand wedge that's still going to be played off your back foot. I've explained it in other videos, the hinge and the hold. There are so many reasons for chipping like that. A, this clock method I've heard, you know, where you come back a distance and try to match that distance. All you're doing is trying to manipulate the club in a weird way, you're decelerating into the ball. If your backswing and fall swing, fall through are the same, you're almost guaranteed to be deselling into that golf ball. Hinge and hold. And if you look through impact after you hit the ball, arm, club shaft remains straight on these little bumps. It's just a bump. You can go back and watch some of my other chipping videos. But, you know, say I was, had a little 15, 20 yard chip shot. All you gotta do is get it inside your back foot a little, get a little bit of shaft lean, your weight onto your front foot, you hinge and you hold. But one mistake you can do is being too rigid. There's a little, some people get confused with the hold because it's not a hinge and be tense and don't let anything move at all. It's just the feeling of hinging and holding. It's so simple. And this technique not only is gonna give you more spin, it's gonna give you better distance control on chips, you're also gonna be able to get out of the rough a lot better because your club is coming down steeper onto the ball. It's not this shallow swing path, almost swing level or up on the ball in a sense, where it's just gonna catch everything. You're gonna to need to rely on bounce. You're basically trying to hit a fat shot at that point if you're playing it in the center. 
you're never going to be consistent hitting ground and then the golf ball. The only time you're really hitting ground and then golf ball is on flop shots or shots where your ball is buried deep in the rough. So that's when, instead of off my, more towards my back foot in the back of my stance, that ball position gets a little more forward. And one of the biggest mistakes I see, well, a couple really big mistakes I see people trying to make flop shots is A, they, they just won't, I, I'm like, open the face, 90 degrees, flat, flat on the ground, and they just won't do it. I don't know why no one can just turn the club face, lay it flat, and then hold the club. It's so simple. Lay it, you know, 85, 90 degrees, like flat, not just opened a little bit. And the other mistake is people think they can grip the club normal and then just open the club face up, and that's creating loft. No, you're just gonna return back to your normal position with a square club face. All you gotta do, it's similar, but it's a hinge and a throw for the flop shot. Hinge and hold for chips, hinge and throw for the flop shot off that front foot. It's very, very simple and just let gravity do the work. That's all you gotta do is let gravity do the work. It pops right up in the air. It's a little weird though. Don't practice too much short game off of mats. I'm gonna tell you why. Spe specifically flop shots. I know I've hit some just to you know make content or whatever off this mat, but I don't practice really my flop shots off of mats because out on the course, you know, on real grass, a flop shot, you're actually hitting a little behind the ball and your club is you know, obviously gonna travel a little more through grass and dirt than a piece of rubber. The rubber creates more of a bounce. So don't practice your short game very much off of a mat. There's just a foot of snow outside right now and I'm forced indoors. So that's why I'm on a mat. But this method, I keep seeing people chip, trying to teach chip just 90 degrees to 90 degrees. You won't see a single great chipper in the history of the game. I, well, in the in more modern history of the game. Maybe way back in the day when the greens were slower than the average fairways are now. But it goes, not only that hinge and hold is great for, you know, these little, little bump and run chips, but all you gotta do is, you know, little 30 yard pitch, 50 yard pitch, 75 yard, three quarter swing, It's all the same. So why are, you, why are people trying to teach you this weird technique of coming in shallow to the ball, kind of slapping at it, you have to hit the ball fat. That is, I've said it so many times, but that is the worst way for someone to chip. And it's almost infuriating seeing so much content online teaching people to chip that way. Like I said, if you're hitting a little little bump and run with a seven iron or a five wood, it might be a little bit more. You, you still want your hands leading forward. You know, if I'm, here, here's my seven iron. If I were to play a bump and run with a seven iron, it's still off my back foot. It's not just in the middle at a 90 degree position, trying to like bring this club back. Don't do that. You won't see any good chippers do that. Even if you're playing a bump and run with a seven iron, it's still the same concept as the hinge and hold. That's all you gotta do. Just a little hinge. It just pops right off. It's so easy, no matter the club. That was a seven iron, five wood. What else we got? Pitching wedge. Pitching wedge, back foot, hands forward. Weight on the front foot, hinge, hold, boom, crisp. Ball comes out a little lower like that. It's gonna have more spin. Your club's not gonna, you, you don't have to hit the ball fat, creating, you know, ground first and then ball contact. You're kind of rolling the dice, getting lucky at that point. You can't judge the way the club's gonna bounce off the ground into the ball very effectively. 
That's one of the reasons flop shots and bunker shots where you do have to catch it a little fat are more unpredictable and higher risk shots. Because of that, there's that unpredictability of you're hitting ground and there, there's you know sand, dirt, grass in between your club face and the ball at that point, causing unpredictability. And there's a small margin for error. But, oops, so I got my 60 here, right? The best thing is learn that back foot hinge and hold and it's gonna come out like a little bump and run. And then if I wanted to increase my trajectory, or especially if your, your ball's buried in, in a tough lie, thick rough, it's the exact same thing as that hinge and hold, except for open the club face about you know halfway, not the full flopper open, but about a halfway open club face. And this one, since it's buried, you do have to get a little bit of ground or grass before ball contact, so it does have a little bit, a little bit of that unpredictable factor. But it's the same as the hinge and hold, little off my back foot, back of center, face is opened about halfway. I just hinge and I hold, and it comes out more of a medium high flight. It, it's so simple. It, it's really unbelievably easy, and then. All you're doing with a flop shot is hinge and throwing. I mean, if you want a little bit less of a flop shot, you can still kind of use that hinge and hold method and kind of go in between. But I would strongly suggest no matter what style of chip you're trying to play, it's either towards your back foot or, or let's say inside your back foot or inside your front foot. That middle position is kind of no man's land for short game. There's no shot I'm gonna play, you know, inside of 50 yards that's in the middle of my stance. Bunker shot, flop shot, they come forward. I'm still keeping weight on that front foot. You, you don't wanna make the mistake of trying to get back too much because then you'll end up hitting behind the ball or you end up swinging up on it too much you end up blading the ball. So even on those flop shots where you're trying to make the ball go straight up in the air, the club is still coming down on it. It's not picking the ball up in the air. That's where everyone makes the mistake is they, they try to pick the ball up in the air. Here we go, this club is 90 degrees flat. That just pops straight up in the air. It's simple, it's so simple. And I'm not gonna waste my time going over all this and keep re reiterating the same points. Like I said, go watch Phil Mickelson's Secrets of the Short Game and learn how to fucking chip because this bullshit I'm seeing on YouTube is absolute garbage. And like, like Phil says, I'm gonna say it, if your coach is teaching you to chip from this 90 degree position, middle of your stance, like this, just return the club back, go find a new fucking coach. Peace.